Hi guys and welcome back to another Dot Race video and today we're going to be playing MotoGP 23. It is now time for round 8 of our MotoGP career mode and it is time for the fantastic and magnificent circuit of the Dutch TT track of Assen. Absolutely adore this track and we will be starting from pole position. Ladies and gentlemen, let battle commence. So here we go then guys, from the best possible spot in the sprint here in the Dutch TT. Today's video will only be us on power setting one against the 120% difficulty AI. So let's see how things materialize here right now. And already going into turn one looks to be pretty damn good for a start with the lowest power option in the sprint on the softest tires available. I think this one is going to be curtains for the AI already. Now, unfortunately, here in Aston, as much as I absolutely adore this circuit, the AI aren't very good. This is a track that I guarantee anyone and everyone will probably be able to beat the AI on the hardest difficulty in this track. They are just no good when it comes. I mean, look how far behind they are already just for making a meal out of turn five. They go into Struben and they turn in way too tight, resulting in a massive time loss every single lap. It will happen there and it also happens going into Mandeven the turn 10. So this is turn 9, this is DeBolt, and into the right-hander here, this is the right-hander for Mandevin, turn 10, and we'll stay on this right-hand side now, and this is where the AI also lose time, so check out the graphic in the top left-hand corner of your screen there, 1.6 is the gap, keep an eye on that because it will go up, and I'll tell you what, oh it is, there it is, 1.7, should be going up any more now, 1.8, yeah, they struggle so much in that right-hander there, the, the AI just turn in way too early and unfortunately I have to say that was in there even in the early access when I uh, when I did my review so unfortunately that never got fixed but one thing it does do is give us an opportunity now just to take a step back instead of being all stressed out and riding at the absolute limit which to be honest we haven't really had to do that this year in uh, the third season of MotoGP 23 career mode but what I must confess it's, it's a nice change of pace just to focus on the riding style improving bit by bit and also get a bit of experience with the lower power option. I do find that uh, power setting 2 is the absolute sweet spot, works wonderfully for me, but dropping it down to 1 I find the bike can sometimes behave a little bit sluggish. And i got to say, it feels pretty good actually, I'm not really feeling any difference. I tried power setting 3 with the, uh, the one lap I did in practice, and then I think the first lap in qualifying, I just used power setting 3 and then decided, you know what, what will 1 do for the rest of the lap? And yeah, seems absolutely fine for me. So, so far so good. 3.5 seconds lead ahead of Jack Miller. And Ian Bassini is in third place. So this is big points for the pair of them. Fourth place for Miguel Oliveira. Good to see the, uh, to the Portuguese rider. Of course, got took out in a previous video. And I've seen a lot of comments who were disappointed to see Miguel Oliveira lose the front. I think that was in Mugello going into turn one, as a matter of fact. And uh, actually thinking about uh, this video here today, I just recorded not long ago the absolutely bonkers race in the German GP in yesterday's video. That was unreal. <laughs> absolutely unreal. If you haven't seen it, I implore you to go and check it out because I'll probably spoil it in a moment's time. So definitely go out and check that and uh, let me know what you think. But if uh, if you're still here, that means you must have seen it already or you didn't care too much for it. So let's chinwag about that for a moment. Yesterday's race had us starting with slick tyres in a completely wet track. And not just myself, the entire grid in the MotoGP sprint all had to start on slick tyres in the torrential rain conditions. It was unbelievable. That would never ever pass safety in MotoGP. Someone would have to say something about it. One of the Dorna officials, Loris Caparossi, anyone in the safety car could have told you that was not a r the right idea, but uh, somehow it happened and it was one of the best glitches I've experienced within MotoGP 23, to be quite honest with you. Just caught a glimpse of Miguel Oliveira as we were talking there. He did temporarily find himself up to second place. The, uh, the Portuguese rider has dropped down to third, but he's still right in there for the podium battle, so good to see. Bit of parody coming here in MotoGP 23. As there's a rider there, they're, they're way behind everyone. He's going into Debolt now, as we've come out of the second, uh, the third split point. So this is pure domination on the lowest power option. 
teammate Bastini behind us. Uh, I thought once we did the testing, because don't forget, we no longer have quotation marks opened, have the best bike in the game, end quotation marks. Now, the reason I say that is because team comparison, of course, had us in fourth. Repsol Honda flew to the top, Aprilia second, I think it was um, the KTM's maybe second or third, I don't really remember. And then the Ducati of our factory Ducati team was down to fourth. Don't know how that happened, but I'll be recording the Silverstone test after this race in a moment. So we'll see what happens. Hopefully our team starts getting a little bit better, but to be honest, maybe we should think the other way. Hopefully the bike goes a little bit worse so we can make the rest of the content for the rest of the year a little bit more entertaining before MotoGP 24 arrives. Now, I have absolutely no problem with just churning out lap times and loving life in front, loving life in red. No problem for me. But I do worry for you guys because, uh, of course, if you're a fan of the action that we had on board the Gas Gas and both the Red Bull KTM, then this is a bit anticlimactic. You guys wanted the Ducati. I'm so glad we went on it. But I can't help to think that uh, we're having it easy right now, even on the hardest difficulty in the game. It's just so funny to me because I finished the second season with the Red Bull KTM and I won't lie to you, I was stressed out thinking that I will never win the championship here in MotoGP 23, which is still not a guarantee, don't forget. It's still not a guarantee. We, have, we might have a lot of points sitting in our pocket, but it's still not guaranteed that we will win. Anything can happen in Grand Prix racing and it probably will. So we still need to make sure to get the job done for the next part of the season. We're approaching round nine, which of course will be the Silverstone test. Round nine afterwards will be the Silverstone race, a race that we were so close to victory to last season, just two corners away from defeating Enea Bastini, but just couldn't quite get the job done. I'd love to see the top step of the podium with us in Silverstone in the next MotoGP Grand Prix 20, uh, MotoGP 23 career mode Grand Prix race. <laughs> that was a tongue twister to say, ladies and gentlemen. So into the left-hand side then. We are up by two and a half tenths of a second here. So in fact, even three tenths of a second. So it's actually not looking too bad here for an improved lap time. So even on power setting one, we're actually getting close to the territory of setting a lap time which is close to the pole position. And that was a 130, almost a 131 flat. We'll call it 131 flat, near enough too. So it's it's close. So we, we're still very much on good lap times, e even with the lowest power option. But what I love to see is the lack of tyre wear from this combination of tyres, medium and soft. It's, it's working an absolute treat. And I've got to say, every time I jump on acid and play it in career mode or play it on my own or do a time trial. I'm reminded of how much I love this circuit. Nice lap time, the same lap time twice in a row. I always feel good about seeing that up on the screen, but I got really disheartened as Joanne Mir has just gone down there. He's just lost eighth place, but I got really disheartened with Aston because of the online shenanigans. We, when I'd play online, loads of people would just abuse the final corner, the Giat Timmy Chicane, every single time just to abuse the lap times and just to get a little bit quicker. Now, it's not a problem if you're doing that in a public lobby amongst uh, your mates or something, but when you're in a live GP situation, it was damn annoying. And I don't know if you caught that then, but there was a cameraman on the left-hand side there, near the barrier, who, who snapped the picture. I'm sure I've seen a flash. Rewind it if you want to, to see it, but I'm sure he snapped the picture just as this rider was passing. That looks absolutely phenomenal, didn't it? That looks that would look so cool. It's a shame I didn't really uh, get a screenshot for that. Because that would have been absolutely awesome. But uh, 11 seconds is the lead now to Enea Bastianini. Tell you what. I mean, I wonder what would happen if they didn't make that mistake into those quarters. I would still like to think we would win this one by a, a good margin. But they make so many mistakes in the circuit. Which in the past, they've actually been really fast here. Superbike 22, my goodness. They, the action that would unfold in the Dutch TT of Aston in the career modes. I've just cut the corner there. Look on that. Really tight to the apex there. I just cut the corner after just talking about how I was annoyed of people doing it online. That should have been a track limit warning. Not like it mattered because that one small track limit warning would not really impede our progress from winning here today in 
the magnificent circuit of Assen. Now, I actually thought about going over to Assen this year, and still might. Uh, I had a chat with Sergio23 about it, possibly head over to uh, to Belgium to see him, and then we'd ride a, a drive across to Assen. Still very much a possibility. I hope we can uh, make that happen. Uh, well, they, he did it again. The cameraman on the left-hand side there did it again. You know you're leading them race by too much if you're looking at the, the scenery on the outside of the circuit. I see flags waving. I don't see any docked race flags. What's going on there? But we'll... Uh, I guess I'll keep an eye out for that. <laughs> I'm not clearly off right now. We're on the big screen on the right. We're gaining a tenth of a second. Tenth and a half as we go into DeBolt. My only one bogey corner in this track. I really struggle into turn nine. I would say that... Uh, maybe not the only corner. I, I still think for my riding I have a lot of improving to do. I'm quite smooth and consistent, but I know I can go faster a lot more places. When I, when I go online with the aces, I'm always humbled because I can see how gentle I can be sometimes. It, it's great for me against the AI, but against those players who've got that little bit more, you can see they are able to take a little bit more than I can. But uh, into the final couple of corners then, into the Giotima chicane, the winner is Dr. Ace once again across the line, staining the top step in red for the Ducati. So there it is then guys, wow, look at those lap times, Ineo Bastini was one and a half seconds slower than we were. No major surprises behind us, Taka didn't get on the po uh, the top 15, that's a shame. So let's have a look at the championship standings, so oh, it's looking beautiful isn't it? 75 points ahead of Jack, 81 clear from Ineo, and 85 clear from who I thought was our championship rival in the form of Maverick Vinales. So, race time it is here in Aston. Beautiful sunny skies. I have a little peek around as we now wait for the red light to go out. It's out. Still using ride height, uh, excuse me, still using power setting one as the ride height device will disengage off the launch control into the Harbot corner. We have almost a carbon copy. I honestly felt that like the AI would launch up on the inside there, but goodness me, we're now one second clear from the Repsol Honda Duo. In fact, that's just been changed. Look how much orange is on the left-hand side there. Joanne Mir, Jack Miller, Mark Marquez, Brad Binder. What year is this? <laughs> Look at them. They're so far behind. They're like ants already. Unbelievable. Paulus, Paulus Spargro? How has he snuck into the top seven? Oh, that has completely thrown me off. <laughs> I'll tell you what. Fair play. And Alex Rins is up into the top five. They've clearly had a mess going into heart, into uh, the Struben corner for turn five. Something's definitely gone wrong there. I'll take it though, I'm happy with that. It's good to see teammate and A are not getting as many points. I know it's not great for our team's championship, but to be honest, I'm just happy to defeat an A. And I, I don't know yet. I don't know whether towards the end of the season, if the AI will go crazy, because I still don't think we've seen Enea as fast as last year and I would have to say that's because of the team's comparison because the Ducati's actually slowly gone worse as Jorge Martin has just binned it somewhere around oh it's into the left hander there for for the Ramshuk is it? was it the Rushnuk? I think it's the Ramshuk that one but yeah and Jorge Martin has gone down just before the GT chicane but yeah regarding the Ducati dominance it, it does seem that once we reduce their performance, Enea Bastini just fell off. Jack Miller has probably been the, the guy to beat if I wasn't on the factory Ducati. But it just makes no sense to me because the, the two years in the career mode, we we were significantly slow. And not due to lack of skill or, or clear uh, determination. It was simply just because the bike was so weak. If you've played MotoGP career mode, you know how it is in this game. It's just that if you get a bad bike at the beginning, it's over. You can't do anything. You lose time on the straights. You can't get past them on the acceleration. The only place you can really get them is on the brakes. And for that reason, you have to get really aggressive and start bashing and bumping fairings with them. But it just seems odd that it seems to be that the only bike that is capable of winning on the hardest difficulty is this bike on screen right now. I definitely want to start another season before we move on to MotoGP 24, simply just to see if I choose another bike, such as the Yamaha, Honda or KTM, will it even be as competitive as this, and will it, well actually will it be even more competitive than this, or is it going to be the same because that bike, I can't believe I just downshifted to first gear there, 
That's the first time I've downshifted to first in a long time. I can't even remember the last time. I'm, it's probably not that long ago. But I've been making such a conscious effort to not do that. So much since you guys told me off so many times. I was whipped many times and I was metaphorically hand slapped many times for using pa uh, the lowest gear possible first gear in a track such as this. It was actually a mistake. That was not intentional. I know what you're thinking, but it wasn't all that bad. So if you are watching, yeah, please don't, uh, please don't uh, upset me. <laughs> I apologise for downshifting to first. It was a mere mistake on my behalf. So into the left hand side. Then this is the Russian hook corner. Turn seven approaches and then turn eight for the second valve. We're actually losing a little bit of time. Not enough to concern ourselves. Zinea Vasnini's found himself back into the top four. Sad to see former teammate Paula Spargo just disappear away from those top eight positions. Fabio Quattro, the monster and Yamaha. We had a social media post from Enea. He was talking about how good the Yamahas are looking after the recent practice, but uh, we haven't really seen them deliver on any sort of changes from the test. Must be uh, merely some sort of, uh, maybe some mind games from Enea Bassini. Maybe it was a bit of uh, satire, a satirical message from teammate Enea Bassini. As we go out of the final corner, not reducing down to first gear this time, puts us on a lap time, and they won 31-3-3-6. Beautiful stuff here in Assen. But what would be more beautiful than a victory? Two victories, two fastest laps, and of course, you guys hitting the subscribe button. That actually means even more. So guys, if you are enjoying the video, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. And of course, if you want to see more videos just like this, then you can check out the playlist to see a lot more MotoGP 23 content right on there. Now, of course, MotoGP 24 is right around the corner. I think I've mentioned that already. But i got to say, I am ready. I think... Uh, I think once I get my hands on that, we are going to really ramp it up with both. Oh, I almost lost the front then. A little bit too eager to the apex into Steckenval. But we're definitely going to ramp it up with the career mode. Keep it on 120% difficulty. Jump into Moto3. Full season there. Moto2. And then in multiple seasons in the Premier Class. But of course, as well, we will be starting the online championships within the Ace Academy. Both championships, cups, and uh, anything else we fancy. Live events and such. So... If you're, uh, if you're interested, definitely get involved because uh, we have a hell of a lot of fun in our Ace Academy. Always trying to uh, set up races and race amongst each other. It's what we enjoy the most, so definitely get yourself subscribed if you enjoy the content. But anyway, into the right hander then across the line. That is a brilliant lap time. Four and a half tenths of a second found as Fabio Quattro ditches it in the same spot Martin ditched it just a few laps ago. That is a lap time quicker than my pole position, but set with power setting one instead of two and three. Marvellous. Power setting one. You little sly devil. Didn't think you'd have that in you, I'll tell you. <laughs> Fair play to the power setting one gods. Out of Strubben, we've still found time. This could be another 130 lap time. Marvellous. And I've just caught gl a glimpse on a certain number 42, Alex Rins, in the podium positions. And again, I made a little small error on the downshift there and immediately back up. And I'll tell you, is back up. Maverick Vinales back up into the point scoring positions in the points that matter the most in the top seven. Binder occupying sixth. Of course, uh, Joanne Mir crashed earlier, so it's just the two Hondas in the top three, uh, top five now. Of course, we did have Joanne Mir in there as well, which uh, certainly would have been a good day. But which is class now as the best team in my particular career mode. As Jack Miller is 16 seconds behind as we just dip off the, the curb there ever so slightly. There's more time to be found in this particular lap. Onto the brakes just before the rumble strip starts. In as tight as you can. Quick change of direction. Onto the power. Ignore the curb and across the line that it is another lap improvement. It's a 137 3 4 for the man on your screens right now. Marvellous job. I am very much enjoying this. This is certainly a track I could do 100% laps on. No doubt. 26 laps of pure brilliance in this circuit. It's magnificent. 
I, I, I never... I don't know, maybe out of all the MotoGP games, there's just one circuit that resonates with, with me the most. It's got to be Assen. It certainly has. Really enjoying Silverstone. Very, very much enjoying Indianapolis as well on this game. I do find it uh, very enjoyable. But I think with a lot of the tracks in MotoGP 23, they're all fantastic. The only one I would probably say I'm not a great big fan of is Soul Pole. That was only one track I couldn't really get involved with. And I think we did the Ace Academy Cup. I had a dreadful race there of trying to stream it at the same time and it just didn't work out. It just didn't quite go to plan. But uh, on the times, we are actually close to improving again. The Delta is now showing a little bit negative, but back into the green there as we dive into the right under for the uh, Mew of an... I can never say that name. Mew Nima, Mew, I can't say it. <laughs> I cannot say the name of that corner. I have tried and I've tried and tried again, but unfortunately I just cannot pronounce turn 11 here in the wonderful circuit of Aston. Look at this. This is another lap time improvement. Across the line, it's a 135.68. Magnificent. I hope we don't slip into the 131s, but you know it's coming. Usually I get on this run of form where I'll just consistently improve the lap times. Usually it's about three, and then on the fourth I'll make a small error. And I think the problem is that because every single lap time is getting quicker and quicker, when you do make a small error, you think you've made a massive error because the, the delta is so negative compared to what that fast lap was. When in reality it's probably still a very good lap, it's just that it, there's a certain uh, mental side to it that just tricks you in thinking you've done a bad lap. So. I'm going to ignore that and put that to the back of my mind as we go from the Wienstein to the Russian Oak and now into Steckenwall. Still very comfortable. Bit deep there though for turn 8. Nothing to cause for concern. It's still very much a good lap time. And it, 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 it's not going to bring Jack Miller any closer, is it? I could crash at this point and I'd still have the lead. But I don't think we've had a, a gap that large since... Right, no, there's been a lot of races this season. We've absolutely dominated. Hereth was a dominant showing. But I do recall in Qatar last year, against an Bassini, he, he just outstretched us all, didn't he? But I could not compete with him. In fact, an Bassini had a large gap in Le Mans in the race. But this will be the end of our lap improvement. But it still should be a good one. So out to the left hand, a little bit of a wheelie there with the GP23 across the line. Oh, I did I, exactly what I said I would. That's exactly what I said on, the, on that start, that last lap going into Harbock. I said it'd be three solid laps of improvement and then on the fourth I'll end up messing it up and I, I must have done it somewhere. That's a shame. But I guess at this point it doesn't really matter, does it? I'm just having fun with it. I hope you guys are as well. I appreciate there's no action as such, but I'm churning out the lap times. I've had a good time just chatting to you guys. It's a bit one way. You guys have not really said much, to be honest. It's always me doing the talking. I'm just waiting for you to talk. I'll, I'll be quiet and I'll give you a gap, but uh, yeah, you guys don't say much. Yes, yeah, it's still quiet, look. <laughs> You're all screaming at the television. I, I'm, I'm speaking, Dr. Ace, I'm speaking. <laughs> oh, I'm so stupid. Anyway, into DeBolt then, that's a little bit deep. Into turn nine. Losing time again, as a matter of fact. I've got to say, there's one thing about this circuit that uh, it just, it doesn't feel tiring. A lot of tracks, maybe not actually, no, now I think about it, there's only, a, there's only a minor few tracks that I would say once I complete my session of the night of recording, I would say it begins to hurt my wrist. Not in the sense of hurt as in, oh, this is painful, but just tired, you know, a little bit knackered. And it is possible to get a little bit knackered from these games, because of course mentally it's, it's very draining, and of course uh, physically with the fingers on the thumbs of the controller, it does get rather tiring. But I would say with Aston, it's one of those tracks that I just don't feel any resistance to. It just seems to flow so naturally and so beautifully that I can just ride there all day long. And the fascinating thing is that it, it's probably not a track suited to my riding style, which probably if I went online, I would notice I would be a little bit slower than the rest of the competition. I'm very much a straight line breaker and of course there's a lot of corners here in this track where it's gentle braking but it's on the side of the tyre a lot. I mean that's evident by the uh, the tyre wear so far. The middle part of the tyres, the big fat part of the tyres is clearly absolutely fine. The hard front looks very solid in the middle and so does the medium, uh, so does the medium rear. 
But something that has inspired me, or at least got me questioning, we've worn so much on the left-hand side of the rear tyre, but not on the front left. So it means that we're being quite powerful with the throttle and very relaxed on the braking, and I would say that's probably me. Not in the sense of being that ex aggressive with the throttle, I, I don't think I'm that aggressive at all. I don't really have that sort of personality. I might be aggressive with the AI, but that's different. That is definitely different. When we have a bike that we can fight with, I'll give as much space as possible. What if it comes to those uh, really cheesy AI like in the Saxon ring, then I'm, I'm going full send. You know, you know me. You've seen the videos, you know I go full send, but across the line, another lap time within the 130s. It's a thousandth of a second slower than what we set on lap 5. Tyres were looking a little bit better back then, but of course it's still this point. It's not a problem at any stage, so on to the right-hander. This is the Ossa Broken, past the Pedro Acosta long lap area. Do uh, have that YouTube short somewhere where I uh, completely abused the long lap pen penalty in reference to Pedro Acosta allegedly missing the uh, the long lap penalty in uh, Assen last year in Moto2. But uh, yeah, the game still clarified it as a done long lap penalty. It was absolutely bizarre. One of the stupidest, strangest things I've ever seen in this game. Not quite as crazy as Saxon Ring, but it was still rather odd, rather peculiar, let's say. As the gap to the beast is now 36 seconds. That is massive. Absolutely huge. Alex Marquez into the top eight. Alex Marquez was in the top eight. Raul Fernandez is now dispossessed him from that eighth position. In fact, the two Crypto Data RNF Aprilias are in the top eight. Miguel Fifth and his teammate Raul in eighth. Impressive. That is actually rather impressive, especially considering they're nowhere on the team's comparison. And the fact the same could be said for Marco Bezzecchi. I don't know what's happened to the VR46 Mooney Ducati team, but in this career mode, they seem to have just gone way off. They were right up there with us. Third place in the championship that uh, Bez held me off for in the first season with the Tech 3 Gas Gas. And yet here we are. He's in sixth and he hasn't featured anywhere in the top ten of the championship, I would say. Really strange. I hope that's not foreseeing real life Marco Betzeki in MotoGP. Of course, at the moment, uh, moving over to GP23, you can tell that Digia, Alex Marquez, Marco Betzeki just haven't quite adapted to the 23th, uh, 23rd version of the Desmond Adici. Now, the thing is, it seems that, what, Peko Banyarin and Air didn't really like it at first either last year? So maybe Bez and Digio will find their way. I, I certainly think they will, and I certainly hope they will. But, uh, yeah, I, I definitely would imagine that both of those riders, both Marco Bezzecchi, Digio, or in this case, Luca Marini in this game, will find their feet eventually by the end of the season. I mean, coming up next, we've got some excellent races to watch. I can't wait to get on with uh, Silverstone, Catalonia. The Red Bull Ring of Austria, very easy victory for that one, I think it will be. Because, of course, last year and the year before, we pretty much dominated. So it might be another power setting one job for that one. We'll see how it goes. But uh, Catalonia as well is not too far away as well. And I really love that circuit. And speaking of Catalonia, next week's Monday stream at 1900 hours GMT, uh, BST, now it is. We'll be racing at the Catalonia circuit of Montmelo against the Aces in the final round in the final cup here in MotoGP 23, the final Ace Academy Cup, the final round is in Catalonia, in Spain, on Monday. So be sure to be there, for which could possibly be the last stream as well. I, I'll, I'll probably not stream now till MotoGP 24. I might stream something else, I've got an eye. Oh, Miguel Oliveira's gone down again. Oh, it, you just have to upset the fans, don't you? Damn it, Miguel. There goes some Portuguese subscribers. <laughs> Damn it. Oh well, Miguel is no longer in the top 10. Of course, on the track house uh, Aprilia next season. Or in next year's game, should I say. But yeah, uh, regarding streaming, I might do another event before we move over to MotoGP 24. But it all depends on how soon I get access to MotoGP 24. Uh, fingers crossed, if anyone's watching, hopefully I do get early access. I would be very grateful. I had it last year and I certainly made good use of it. So uh, yeah, fingers crossed 
for that because I'd love to get a MotoGP 24 start cracking out on the guides, the videos, the reviews, everything and just be prepared so when you guys get it we can just jump straight on and have fun and especially the guides because that's important. Got to get those guides out ready for the aces, ready for people to watch to make sure they can master MotoGP 24 but speaking of mastering we've completed the penultimate lap and now we have one more lap to master, one more lap to dominate here in Assen. It's been a stellar performance, a deviation of probably no more than a second on lap time, a 130.5, probably to the slowest of a 130.3 or something like that. Can't see the rest of the lap times anymore, but we now have a 41 second advantage over Jack Miller, a 45 second advantage over teammate Enea Bastinini, and Alex Rins is still featuring on the podium in third place. And in fun fact for you, they're only coming across the line now. We are two sectors in, and they're just crossing the line. This is absolutely amazing. In fact, there's a rider that's not too far ahead of us here. Give it a couple more laps and we possibly could have lapped them. Uh, maybe not, considering how much speed they just found on that particular straight there. But I guess we'll also do the same as we come out of the Duke of Sloot corner into the right hander in the corner I can never pronounce we now go on to the power past where Lorenzo crashed in 2013 and broke his collarbone passed into the left hand side where Louis Salon made the move to win his uh, the race here in Assen many many years ago in 2012 into the Giotto Michigan onto the power and ladies and gentlemen we got to get a big wheelie for the aces and I think Louis Salon won in 2013 now I think about it <laughs> anyway ladies and gentlemen Victory is ours here in Assen. A wonderful, stellar performance. And Fabio Digi Antonio finishing in the points. Good job to Digi. Any other surprise attacker? Oh, come on. Oh, it was Paul. Paul was 1 minute 17 behind. Attacker was a minute. My goodness. But there you go. That is a confirmation of the race results here in Assen. And here is the championship standings. Another five points pinched away from Jack Miller. It's now an 80-point lead, 93 ahead of Venea, and 105 ahead of Maverick Vinales. Ladies and gentlemen, I think that concludes our video here today. So thank you very much for watching the video. I will leave you now with the Teams Championship and, of course, the Constructors Championship as well. But guys, thank you very much for watching. I certainly hope you enjoyed. Apologies we didn't get much action here, but I hope you enjoyed the laps nonetheless. See you in the next video tomorrow, guys. Ciao for now. Oh hi, didn't quite see you there. Good to see you're still here. If this video didn't quite set your appetite, then why not watch some more Dot Race content by clicking the video shown on screen now. Furthermore, if you would like to follow me on social media, you can do so now with the links down in the description. Consider subscribing so you don't miss a single Dot Race video.